Yes, I'm still here, Hollywood. Just ahead on today's episode. Having been in the theater and seen myself, it was so overwhelming to see myself that big. You know, I, it was just so overwhelming for me that I came out and I told a couple people, I hate this movie. This is terrible. I don't like it at all. And I think I was just really overwhelmed, you know, and, and it, you know, MGM got wind of that. And they sort of like shuffled me off, like <laughs> smiling out of the theater and then grabbed me and pulled me to the side and said, please don't say those kind of, don't say that. Let me throw out another name, uh, Matthew Perry. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, what a bummer. What a bummer. Too, happens way too often these days. Oh, you're gonna make me cry, I'm so emotional. One of the people I'd like to ask you about is um, Harvey Weinstein. It actually was, it was so powerful to be a part of women that talked openly about this because you weren't like, oh, I'm not the only idiot or I'm not the only one that got duped or I'm not the only one that, I'm, I must have put myself in this position, you blame yourself. In Hollywood, Aliens Coming to Earth has been a go-to theme for screenwriters for decades. And of course, not all of the creatures from the beyond are as adorable and gentle as E.T. Some are here to wreak havoc among the human race. In 1995, one classic alien movie brought a horrible creature to Earth, perfectly packaged as one of the most beautiful women to ever walk our planet. This is Still Here Hollywood. I'm Steve Kometko. Join me with today's guest, Natasha Henstridge of Species. Hi, Natasha. Hello. Welcome to Still Here Hollywood. Yeah. Uh, perfect for me. No, it's I'm perfect still for here. me too. I'm still here. <laughs> Do you feel that way? Hire me someone. This year I feel that way. God, I haven't worked in this year. I've done some PR for stuff that I did last it's year. It's only May. But... Right? <laughs> did the strike have anything to do with that? Do you think? I'm guessing the strike had something to do with Yes, I think there's just, I don't know why, I th you would think there's more stuff being made and there's more content and everybody was ready to like throw content back. But I, I'm, I'm actually confused because people say the strike has something to do with it and still COVID and still nobody, I don't know if it's just that they're not hiring me or, but I feel like I'm talking to a lot of actors that work on the regular, right? Not, you know, that work on the regular who are not working. So I don't know. Do you have insight into this? No, I don't. I wish you could tell me I'm the answer. I'm not the person so. to look to for insight. <laughs> Are you sure? Yes, I'm positive. <laughs> That's not what I hear around town. <laughs> <laughs> you burst onto the scene in such a big way. Mm. Didn't you? I did. Was it frightening? You were so young, too. Yeah. It was both not frightening in some ways because I had no idea for me, I was getting to make a movie. So I was so excited about the, uh, the idea that I, I get to be in a film one time in my life. You know, this is, it's what I wanted to do, but you never know if it's gonna happen, right? And so I was working with all these amazing actors, big actors, famous actors, established, talented people, but I had no idea who they were. I was so young, I didn't know. So in that way, not frightening at all, but when the movie came out and it was successful and people knew me kind of, really got to know me um, very quickly within a few day period, that freaked me out. I wasn't a fan of that, yeah. Did you have a big team around you to protect you when it first started? I had agents and you know, MGM had their PR people and the producers and there were some handlers and, and they needed to handle me because I was 19 years old and I was now the star of their film that was you know, suddenly doing well, and they wanted me to promote it. And I remember, I remember coming out of the screening. We didn't have a premiere, but we had a cast and industry screening. And I remember coming out of the the theater and having been in the theater and seen myself. It was so overwhelming to see myself that big. You know, I, it was just so overwhelming for me that I came out and I told a couple of people, I hate this movie. This is terrible. I don't like it at all. And I think I was just really overwhelmed, you know, and and it, you know, MGM got wind of that. And they sort of like shuffled me off, like <laughs> smiling out of the theater and then grabbed me and pulled me to the side and said, please don't say those kinds of, don't say that, you know. So I was being handled a little bit, but no, I didn't have, I think nowadays, you know, people are getting um, training in media and, you know, all of those things that we, we didn't have any of that. And nobody was doing that with me. I was just a, free for all and <laughs> well now that you've had some distance 
to process all of this. Yes. What do you think of the movie now? I love it. I'm, 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 I, I love it. I'm proud of it. Um, and it changed my life. And so I'm very grateful for How it. How much of an impact did it have on you? Oh, God, it changed everything. I mean, it changed everything. It's the reason to this day that, you know, people will, and, and you know, it could have gone a million different ways, but it's the reason to this day that people will hire me and in different countries where, you know, you know, they say you have a little bit of a name because they know you still from these movies that you've made 25, 30 years ago, you know. Um, obviously, you know, you want to show up and do a good job and have a good reputation and and do some good work and all of that kind of stuff throughout your career. But I'm not but it's not lost on me that that's a big part of, you know, it's helped me throughout my career for sure. Do people come up to you when you're out? Yeah, yeah. They still do. And How many about, selfies have you taken? I've <laughs> taken quite a few selfies over the years, for sure. <laughs> um, people still recognize me from that movie, which is just so damn flattering. <laughs> I'm like 30 years on, and that's what they, you know, they remember me from that. I'm, I'm totally flattered by that. Um, and it had that kind of impact. And I think it's really fun to see all these newer generations that still connect to the film and watch it now. I'll meet fans sometimes and they're like 20 years old and I'm like, what? This was 10 years before you were even born. Why are you even, who turns you on to this, you know? And so it's cute, it's yeah. really sweet. Uh, you mentioned you worked with some really big names. Um, one I, I would like to throw at you is uh, Bruce Willis. Mm -hmm. He's having some trouble right now. What I would know. you say to him? I know, he has. He's, he's really going through it, isn't he? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that I got to work with him. I'm grateful that I got to be around him when he was well. I'm, um, so impressed at his family and how they've surrounded him. I remember his daughters being young girls and being on set when we were filming and to see them as these incredible women now and the way that they are there for their family and Demi and his wife, I think her name's Emma. But they're just, the way they've all kind of come together to be the support for him is really beautiful. And I'm, I'm super grateful to him as well because, you know, he was very much had a, I mean, he really decided on putting me in that film at the end of the day. And so I'm super grateful for that too because I actually, it's one of my favorite films I've ever, I've ever been in, The Whole Nine Yards. It was a blast. It was fun making it. It was fun watching it. I went, this is fun. When I... And I never like anything I'm in, so, <laughs> so it, was, it was cool. It's hard getting to watch yourself. It's hard when you first do it, you know. It's, it's hard for me, even 30 years on, to watch myself and things, to not... And it's not that I'm vain. It's not that, you know, I don't think I'm particularly vain for an actress, to be honest with you. Um, I like to look good. Don't get me wrong. Of course. <laughs> you do. I care about things like that, but I'm not, you know, I've never let it rule my life. You know, I've been heavy and thin and this and that. I, I'm happy. I'm not happier one way or the other. I mean, this is the best way possible. You have every reason to be vain. You're very And I sweet. mean, that's a good thing. That's sweet. I just don't, yeah, I'm not, I guess that's where I was going with it, right? About watching myself on camera and stuff like that. I'm just not, I always feel like I don't, I very rarely do I go, wow, I was really in flow. I really felt that scene. Or or sometimes I love the scene and I hate the lighting or something. Or, you know, I pick things apart too much that I'm in. How did you decide to become an actress? Um, I You're think Canadian, right? I'm Canadian, yeah. I think that was always in me on some level. I, was, I came from a family that were very um, conservative in many ways. And... You know, the, that Canadian mentality of, you know, don't be any more than anybody else. That just kind of like, just calm down and be a good citizen and be a good girl and don't be seen too much and don't be too loud. And I hated all that. <laughs> I just was like, be yourself, be open, be creative, be spontaneous. I just had that in me from a really young age. My poor mom did not know what to do with me. I think she looked at me and she was just like, wow, I, how did I, you know, and this is it. Threw up her hands. Yes, just like, what am I going to do with this one, you know? Um, and so from a young age, I was dressing up and I was putting on costumes and I was interviewing people. I loved to interview people. And I actually still really enjoy 
people, getting to know them, understanding them, what makes them tick. And, and so early on, I kind of, I thought being a journalist would have been cool or a reporter, or, you know, I loved that sort of thing. Um, and then I got into school and I was doing plays and, you know, getting to be the ham that I was and, and there was a space for it. And so I think it happened really early on for me. Um, I loved being on stage then. Now it terrifies me, but <laughs> but at the time I loved it. Do you still get back to Canada? Do you yeah. have family there? Mm, all the time, yeah. So I was born in Newfoundland where my parents now reside again. Way east? Way east, like the eastest east island in the Atlantic. Um, and was raised in Alberta. And I just went back to Alberta this past Christmas. I go to Newfoundland a lot more because I really love it there. It's so beautiful. And the whole family sort of congregates back there during the summers and stuff. So um, I do spend a lot of time in Newfoundland. And I had a place there for a while. And um, But yeah, I go to Alberta a little bit as well. My brother lives there. And my whole family is spread across Canada. They all live in Canada. Really? Yeah. Big yeah. family? Oh, yeah. Huge. My dad is one of 12, six boys and six girls. Um, and my mom is one of four. We've lost a couple of my aunts and uncles along the way, but um, huge family that all still get along. They're, my parents are from towns that are about 18 miles apart, so they all know each other. My mom is like the, one of the sister. You know, they're just, the family's very intertwined. They've been together since they were 15 or 16 years old, so. Um, it's pretty cool. Yeah. And they all, they're all on WhatsApp together and like family group chats and it's really cute. There are good things about the internet. Yeah, I guess so. Keeping yeah. Keeping in touch with people. Yeah. Yeah. If they want to be kept in touch with. Right. Well, you can always <laughs> block them if not. <laughs> yes. Delete, alt, yes. control, alt, delete. Yeah. Yeah. Do you like winter? I miss winter and I do like winter because I love to snowboard and I love, I love, cozy vibes and I grew up in that um that being said the grass is always greener because I could not wait to get out of the freezing cold Alberta weather Alberta northern Alberta is next level freezing I mean you know it was like 40 below Celsius when I was growing up on the regular and in school we had to go outside up until 25 below zero we had to go outside for recess at 25 below zero they let you come in so we grew up tough and it was, it was, it was hardcore. I mean, I think it was really hard. It's warmer there now over the years with, with global warming, I guess. But, um, so it was very cold. So I love the winter, but I love the option to go to it, not live in it all the time. <laughs> to answer your question, <laughs> long story longer. <laughs> no, I moved back to Chicago from Los Angeles about uh, 12 years ago or so. Yeah. And, uh, people were asking me at the time. Do you think you can take the winter? I grew up there. Not going to be a problem. I hated it. Yeah. I hate it. I love the city. Yeah. I hate the winter. Yeah. And Chicago is cold. Yeah. Not it's quite. It's got that blistering. North Alberta, windy, whatever. Windy yes. cold, yes, though. It is. I, yeah. I went a couple of years ago and I was like, woo. Uh, I tell the you story. Do, you, yeah. When I got back there, uh, I had forgotten how to drive in snow mm -hmm. and I was getting stuck everywhere. How funny. And I would, you know, if I saw somebody on the on the street, like you know, young kids or something, I'd wave you know five dollar bill out the window. Could you come push me? You know, right? And it worked pretty well, but right. you run out of money fast. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> there, especially yes. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's true. It's a skill driving in the snow. You got to go with the slide. Go with the slide. Don't go against the slide, kids. Exactly. <laughs> you have driven snow. Oh yeah, no, I definitely am very well versed, <laughs> for sure. Um. Let me throw out another name, uh, Matthew Perry. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, what a bummer. What a bummer. Too, happens way too often these days. Oh, you're going to make me cry. I'm so emotional. Oh. I'm already frail today. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, um, yeah, no, it's just so, so sad. I mean, I remember working with him, and I remember that he was, I think he turned his house into a, into a, um, a rehab at one point it just meant so much to him sobriety and stuff and I still don't really know all the ins and outs and you know how he passed I know there's so many different stories and whatever but I know that it was a something that he struggled with for his whole life and it just goes to show you you can have everything in the world fame and money and this and that and if you don't have your health mental health <clears throat> or or sobriety in his case or whatever it's it's all just 
for naught, isn't it? It's, yeah, sad. Uh, he was a delightful, delightful human. I had a really nice time with him. Mm -hmm. Really nice time. Loved him. Um, do you have a favorite memory? I remember, I remember we had to do this kissing scene in, I think it was the whole nine yards, and it was a big shot that was set up. And he was so lovely and so sweet. And he had this girlfriend at the time that I think he dated for quite some time. They were together for maybe five or six years or something. And I just, I, I teased him about this endlessly after the fact because... Because I remember filming, and it was a big, it was a big like crane shot, and lit up, and you know the big hall, you know they're spending money and set it up, and they've lit the entire harbor or wherever we were. It was somewhere outside, and I remember looking at him and having this big romantic moment, and the camera was zooming in and the whole thing, and he and I was just coming up to his face, and I was about to kiss him, and I just see right behind his head is the girlfriend. <laughs> watching like this you know she was right I was pr practically kissing her right in the eye line of like <laughs> and I just remember teasing him about it so much I was like so you you got it Matthew she's 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 keeping her eye on you real close <laughs> you got it going on she was so it was just, it was very cute and he laughed and he was he was he was adorable we had a lot of beautiful moments because he was so f he was so funny but I also spent time with him where he was very shy and private you know there was an, there was another side of him that I think the interesting thing I think about being a com comedian is this idea and you're on camp you know you're on TV every single day you're in people's living rooms and people genuinely think they know you and I think that was hard for him I think he really struggled with that too because I remember being out to dinner a few times and for him never having a bit of peace, you know? Somebody was always like, and then they'd be so disappointed if he wasn't Chandler on demand every minute of the day. And, and you know, so he was very real about that too and very honest with me, which I appreciated. And I loved him. He was very transparent and, and real, I thought, um, in my experiences with him. And we'll be right back. One of the people I'd like to ask you about is um, Harvey Weinstein. Mm, I knew it. I knew oh, it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I knew that I, was coming. I thought of him, too, because every year when you, I'd go to Cannes, he'd be there mm -hmm. with, with Gwyneth Paltrow or Nicole sure. Kidman. What's it like being so beautiful? <laughs> well, the fact that you're saying that to me today is a huge compliment because I had some friends over and I drank too much wine last night. <sighs> Knowing you were coming here, oh. What do you think now about the decision you made to become an actress? Actor, we don't. Is it actor now? Always. Yeah. I say I, actor automatically actor. too. Yeah. I do say that instead of actress, funny enough. That's probably just my male energy coming through or something, but. <laughs> um, I am beyond, beyond grateful that I've been able to have this career. I mean, it's just been a dream come true. It's been a dream come true, even on the days that I'm complaining, that I don't like it, I don't want to learn my lines, I don't want to do the audition. I hate auditioning. I hate showing up in rooms and auditioning. I'm so grateful for COVID, for the fact that we can self-tape. I always hated it. But So there's so much of that I don't like. Um, but then having those moments, having those days, working with different people, working with creatives, having a, an amazing scene that felt really good, traveling the world on somebody else's dime. Come on. I mean, it's just. Oh, I've done that. Right? Yes. It's freaking awesome. Yeah. We're so lucky. And I lose sight of it a lot because we all get in our little weird little spirals. But it's, I'm, I'm it's grateful. It's that time of the year where the, the Cannes Film Festival is about to happen. Yes, And I used right. to go just about every year. Right? For nine They'd or ten fly years. fly you out and, there yeah. and stuff. And you were just on the carpet seeing all the glam. and Yeah, on it was very else. nice. And, and you knew working in France, that you'd have a good meal at the end of oh, the day. <laughs> gosh, no kidding. I did a lot of walking then. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I filmed in, in Cannes. Did and you? In, so um, beautiful. For months. And I mean, talk about, and then a little tiny wine during lunch. I mean, the French know how to live. Come on. They <laughs> yes, do. they do. <laughs> yeah, and they take the whole summer off. Yes. Two yes. months usually, one oh, or two fantastic. months. fantastic. Yeah. Are there any actors or actresses? There I go. 
Any people in show business who you wish you could have worked with? People you looked up to? Mm. Gosh, there's just so many um, incredible, incredible actors. Um, I'm trying to think of any in particular. I mean, <laughs> the funny thing, I guess the fear part of me and the part of me that, you know, would be so afraid to work with some of these people. <laughs> it's the truth of the matter. I think that held me back, you know, going... I'm not good enough to work with them and not wanting to like work with with great people that make you better. Um, but I would say, I mean, Meryl Streep, I'm a huge fan. I'm a, I'm, I'm a fan of Kate Blanche, you know, all the Kates, <laughs> all the amazing Kates. There's just so many incredible women that are so fantastic. Um, Kate Winslet, Kate Blanchett. Yes. Kate Hudson. Yes. There's a lot of Kates. Yeah, there's You're a lot right. of Kates. Um, Men, too. Oh, gosh. There's so many great... I have a big crush on Colin Farrell, so <laughs> I have to look over there. We should tell you her boyfriend is sitting <laughs> over there. <clears throat> so that'd be a fun day at the office, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, there's so many... There's too many to list. There's too many to list. I can't even... I can't even think right now. Uh, one of the people I'd like to ask you about is um, Harvey Weinstein. Mm, I knew it. I knew oh, it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I knew that was coming. I thought of him, too, because every year when you'd, I'd go to Cannes, he'd be there mm -hmm. with with Gwyneth Paltrow or Nicole sure. Kidman. You know. Sure. Oh, yeah. He was... I knew him, you know, back in New York, back in the early days, before... I think it was before he even started Miramax. Like, way, way... He was already into film producing. I maybe he had Miramax. It's going way, way back. So, I mean, he was, <clears throat> he was, he was beginning and starting to just rule the, the city, you know, rule the business and stuff. And I don't think it's just, it's one of those weird, weird things in life, you know, and I've talked about this briefly before, but it's one of those things where you look and you go, this guy is so legit. He's doing all of these incredible projects he is the man and you want to be in business with him and then you feel and what was so liberating about some of it is that you know when you feel like you're the only one who was treated in a certain way and I did <laughs> came home and told people what what my experience with him was and and then you come to find out that you're not it actually was it was so powerful to be a part of women that talked openly about this because you weren't like oh I'm not the only idiot or I'm not the only one that got duped or I'm not the only one that I'm I must have put myself in this position you blame yourself and all of these things right and and because someone's so powerful it's not the first thing you're going to be talking about with everybody you know at the time I did though I did talk to my my um my manager was in my case nearby at the time and so um when somebody has that much power over you Mm -hmm. uh, and you want a career, and you have a you want a future. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I can understand completely how uh, certain things might go the way of the you know whatever way, way the wind's blowing, or mm -hmm. might take. It's hard to take yourself out of that situation, or That's leave it. yourself in that situation. That's it until it goes way way too far. So there's. I think there's been a line over the years that, you know, I think women have had to honestly, sadly, always walk a certain line of, to quote Johnny Cash, <laughs> um, always walk a certain line of being attractive. It's not just about your talent. It's about being attractive. It's about them having some mystery. It's about them going wow, she's really beautiful. I wonder what it'd be like to be with her that they, you know, they, I mean, I don't know what I can say on this thing, but people are always like, you know, you want to be friends with her or you want, she needs to be fuckable. She needs to be this. She needs to be all of these things. So women have always had this weird line to walk in that way. And it's only when that, when that goes too far, when, you know, and it's not about engaging in it. It's just about holding yourself Look, I, I've heard all these rumors about casting couches and all of that stuff, and I never really had those experiences. And there's only been a couple of things that have ever happened in my life. Um, and Harvey was one of them. And, and look at him. Look at him now. Um, what did you think almost, about the, oh, was, his conviction being overturned? Yeah. I mean, it sucks. 
honestly, it sucks. People, <clears throat> people really f fought so much. So it, I think it. I think I heard Ashley Judd talking about it a little bit. I think people are really triggered. I had a million people call me up and ask me to speak on it, and it's, it's this weird thing because as a survivor, victim, whatever you want to call it, I'm not that woke. It is what it is. Um, you don't want to keep putting your, I respect the women that keep talking about it, but I have a desire to like move on past it because unfortunately it still affects the way people see you. It does affect, oh, this one is going to cry about this or whine about that, or you're not going to be able to look at her sideways or, t you know, it's so sad. And I know we're in a different time after the Me Too movement. I think it's made, it's, it's moved the needle in a lot of ways, but I do still go, moving on don't want to get into don't want to talk about it like i hope he gets his hopefully he stays where he is you know um but at the same time there's still a fear there is a weird fear around it you know there's a stigma around it still it's i felt like i had to support the women and i came out and i spoke in that way for that reason and then i just wanted to like not be a part of it anymore <laughs> it's it's i think we're at a time where it's much less likely to happen i think uh, i think it's really made a difference i d definitely think it's made a difference yes yeah for sure um and yet there's still something and maybe it's in my own head i still think there's people that are, you know, everybody's everybody's got their own perspective and where they come from and what they grew up with and what's normal to them and all of these things play into it. And so I think there's still an element, unfortunately, of people who are like, get o you know, get over it or, you know, enough is, en you know, that kind of thing and they don't, and, and so part of me goes, I just wanna just take it right out of the equation and not go on and on about it either. And hopefully, now I'll be the first person to stand up when somebody's doing something off color on set, something that feels wrong or protecting young actresses and saying, you don't have to let him do that. That makes you uncomfortable. And that's not, you know, you stand up for yourself or I'm happy to stand up for you. So I'm the first person to do, to do that. But- um, Did he impact your career in a negative way? I, I don't know for certain if he did or not, um, but I know that he used things, books that I was trying to option and things that I was trying to do, he used that as a, as a hook, as an anchor and as a manipulation tool, which he had no, he had absolutely um, no uh, intentions of actually making these things. So I did find that out and that's kind of a bummer. You're like, oh, so, you know, that's, that's, that's just part of his antics and how he worked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, what irons do you have in the fire now? So You're still many. looking for something. So many. <laughs> um, I have a couple little indies. I just had a movie come out in theaters. I've had a few. Um, I, have, uh, I have a movie called House of Abraham coming out that I did that a friend of mine wrote, Lucas Hassel wrote, um, a little psychological thriller. I'm producing a Christmas movie because I'm a huge Christmas fan. and Hallmark Channel. Little, it's a little edgier than the Hallmark Channel, okay. and for, unfortunately, or probably would have been made already because that's the problem, right? People want it to be completely in that world, um, and it's it's edgier than that. So we've got we've got the green light on it, but we haven't started making it yet. So hopefully January, <laughs> hopefully January. This has been going on for a while, though. <laughs> um so that's that's in the works and you know trying to make my own projects as well as take basically any movie when people offer me movies overseas i'm like yeah uh-huh i'm in <laughs> what's the best piece of advice you got about hollywood i was gonna say take fountain but that doesn't even work no, anymore no, no, that's <laughs> Betty Davis's line. That's right. How to get ahead in Hollywood. You know what? <laughs> exactly. It's yeah. great. It's when you know. such a good, when you know, you know, but yeah. actually that's not going to work anymore, is it? <laughs> it's busy everywhere now. Yeah. There's no driving around, no getting anywhere. <laughs> I know, I Very cute. I only come back here about once a month, and I'm so surprised at the number of buildings that have gone up in Hollywood. Yeah. You know, there's the Godfrey Hotel, and there's... Uh, 
other buildings, high rises in that area. Yeah. The Jack in the Box I used to go to is all boarded up. Oh, <laughs> so yeah, it's changing constantly, yeah. changing, isn't it, LA? Yeah. It's getting a little bit better again right now. It's It went through, you know, I think COVID with many, many cities. It was so hard. Obviously, the rents are astronomical. So, of course, they're making more buildings. <laughs> Building them up. <laughs> Stacking as many people in them as they can. Um, but, yeah, it's changed. It's changing for sure. Like anywhere, I guess. But, yeah. yeah. What's it like being so beautiful? Well, the fact that you're saying that to me today is a huge compliment because I had some friends over and I drank too much wine last night. <gasps> Knowing you were coming here? Oh. <laughs> so rude. So rude. Um, I drank too much wine last night. I'm usually like a couple of glasses or one or two or a cocktail or two. I'm not an over drinker at all. And last night I over drank. Did you um, use a straw? No, I'm going to try that next time. I'm going to drink half as much and use a straw. So I get the little buzz and that's it. Just stop. <laughs> stop when you're supposed to stop. Um, that's very sweet of you to say. Um, it's it's interesting, you know. I I can feel good about myself or bad about myself and like anybody. But I, I will say this. I never grew up and maybe that's what helped me develop. I modeled even. I was even on set where people are like, oh, beautiful makeup and you're and the lighting's good and you look gorgeous in the photos and I never felt that special in the, in the looks department ever and maybe that's a blessing maybe that's how I developed a personality <laughs> I don't know um, but I appreciate the compliment and it, I look back it was I sincere do, I do look back and I do go oh Mm, mm, you were cute. <laughs> you didn't know it at the time, but you were cute. <laughs> I tell young girls that all the time when they're these days I find, you know, I look at my son's girlfriend and I look at, you know, these girls that are 22 years old, 23, 25, so hard on themselves, so hypercritical, living in social media standards. They're depressed. They don't want to go out. They're never good enough. They're never pretty enough. They're never skinny enough. And I have to say, I just go, enjoy your youth. You're so beautiful. Like, you're so, just enjoy it. Let go of that. It's a mental health thing, isn't it, though? It's very hard to impress that upon somebody who's young. But you're never going to be this beautiful, have this much collagen. Have <laughs> Like, just take it easy on yourself, you know? Give yourself a break. That's what do you feel comfortable telling me about your children? Do you like being a mother? I do. I do. Motherhood has been... I can't imagine not being a mother. Um, I will not deny that it has been the hardest job in the world. It has been so challenging beyond, and, and I, I mean, I'd love to be able to come on here and say it's just been all rainbows and butterflies, but I'd be lying. It's It's been a lot of work. <laughs> it's been a lot of work. Um, my kids are incredible. They're both Asher and Tristan. Tristan's 25 now and Asher's 22. They're both incredibly intelligent, incredibly, um, you know, bright kids, curious kids. They want to live. They, they live very different than I am. They're very, very different. They're much more private. They don't like to be in social situations at all. They, I think some of that's COVID. Some of that is because I, we traveled around the world and they were quite social as youngsters. Now they're very quiet, very much more to themselves. It's so interesting. Um, my kids had attention deficit issues and dyslexia uh, growing up. And so they went to some various, all the great schools in LA. They went to every private school and then they went to special schools and um, to, to help with, with that, to focus on that. So that was a challenge. That was a challenge, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, you know, it was, it was challenging uh, raising them and also such a gift. There's nothing like going to your kids' games and football and you know, all, basketball. Do either and, of them want to get into the business? Not at all. Tristan, my older son, there was a show called October Road, I think it was called. Um, I was friends with the writer, and Tristan, my eldest son, when he was about 10 years old, got a role on the show. And now my kids were like extras in a thing that I would do, or just you'd see them on the side, or, you know, something like that. They thought that was fun, because they were on set with me all the time. You know, they were with me a lot of the time anyway. Um, but when my son got this role, he was very excited. He was going to make $800 because he was kind of doing a stunt. He had to like fake beat somebody, <laughs> beat a kid up in the show. 
And we were out in the woods, and now I'm the mom of the actors, right? So I'm hanging out with all the actors' moms, all the stage moms. Freezing. We're freezing out there in a tent with a heater. I'm like, God, I'm so lucky. I get spoiled in my, <laughs> in my position. Um, and, the kid, and the kids are all out there, and Tristan got um, uh, a blister on his foot while he was out there. And I think they could work the kids for like eight hours or something at the time, six or eight. I don't remember whatever the, the rules were. And he had a blister, and it was like he got to warm up in the in the little thing with the heater, and we took his shoes off, and I gave him a little foot massage, and then the AD came over and said, Tristan, we need you back on set, and he goes, oh no, I got like a blister on my foot, I can't get my sh I can't put my shoes back on, and I was like, that's show business, honey, and he never went back. <laughs> He never wanted to act again. He was over it. it take was, fountain, Tristan. Take fountain, Tristan. <laughs> <laughs> it was so adorable, though. I took him out for a sushi dinner. A kid's a total foodie. He loved. He liked his sushi dinner. Um, and we put like eight hundred dollars in his account, like in a Coogan account for him or whatever it was. And he was pretty happy with that, but had no interest. No interest in acting after that. It's a lot harder than people give it give it credit for <laughs> coogan account named after jackie coogan i don't know what the coogan accounts are named after but it's an account when you have a child that's acting you have to put it maybe is it i i, I that's, that would be my my guess um, who was that jackie coogan he uh, worked as a child he was also uh, uncle fester in the the adams family television show okay. in the 60s okay uh but he used to tell, when he would meet kids, he would say, you know, behave yourself. I made a law for you. Something, something oh, to so that effect. Oh, so probably was. Yeah. Maybe he lost a lot of his money to his parents or yes. something. And that, so they protect the kids yeah. in that way. Yep. Yeah, probably. So, uh, probably that. When, when you first saw the scene uh, in Species, do you say species or species? Does it matter? <sighs> species. I think I say species. Actor or actress? Species. Spe I think I say bu either or. Okay. Uh, either either what was your <laughs> reaction when you first saw the tongue your tongue going through the guy's head it was so, it was actually really fun to see those um effects that happen after the fact right so anytime you get to see a little cgi or a little something that you do after that that you know because you're all you're just imagining those things on the moment so to see that stuff at the time i was like good the men out there will be warned don't mess with me <laughs> <laughs> if they didn't listen no, no, they didn't. Um, well, Natasha, it's been fun talking to you. It's nice to talk to you. Uh, what are you going to do with the rest of your day? I'm recover actually, from your wine. I'm, I'm actually taking my guy out on a date. So we kind of like do date nights on the weekends, and sometimes he takes me, and sometimes I plan something for him, and it's a surprise, and I can't say it right now because he's here. Okay, can't do it. Don't listen, BB. Don't listen, boo-boo. Boo-boo, I'm sorry. <laughs> BB, boo-boo. Uh, <laughs> tomato, tomato. Thanks, Natasha. Thank I appreciate you. it. Thanks for coming You really by. are still here, see? Yes. You're for still today. Here. You're still here. I go back to Chicago on Monday. You do? Yeah. So you, the cold didn't deter you too much? No. No. It's just too much to move. <laughs> I feel the same All way. All this stuff I collected. What was I thinking? <laughs> I feel the same way. Just start getting rid of it. You know, uh, it's funny. I, um, when my mother passed away, she was 98. She had collected a lot of Good stuff. Yeah. But, you know, the, the grandchildren don't want any of the old silverware or the old plates. They don't or, have any use for that. No. You know, yeah. and I, so I, I kind of took a lot of it in, mm -hmm. thinking yeah. at some point they'd yeah. come to their senses. But no. But they still haven't. No. I think as they get older, they're going to appreciate those things more. I feel like it takes a long time for kids these days to appreciate the things that... And obviously, things have changed, and people are minimalist now, and nobody wants anything extra, and it's all about being having less and being cooler. <laughs> you know, that's... and Which is cool, which yeah. I like. I appreciate that. But, but, yeah, you're right. We save these things, and it's like, my kids are just going to be thrown... I'm going to pass... I'm going to be... Six feet under, my kids are just going to be throwing it everything out anyway. So I, I do a lot of that as I go now. I'm just getting rid of stuff all the time. I have I've got to learn that practice. Mm. Let it go. You know, they're all they're my my nieces uh, are all in their fifties. Okay. So, and one is in, in her sixties. She's going to kill me because she watches regularly. Um, so, 
I think they've kind of reached everything they want. You know, they've accumulated what they want. Right. And they don't want more. Right. So, so now really is time to get one. Yes. Yep. What's her name? Maria Kondo? Kondo? Maria Kondo? The one who's like, if it doesn't bring joy, spark joy, get rid of it. If you haven't touched it in over a year. Get rid of it. Mm. I know, but if you're sentimental. I am. I am too. I have to say, there's a lot of things in my garage that I haven't touched in over 20 years, but I'm sentimental and I go, one of these days, my kids will go through this stuff and they can throw it out then, but at least they'll see it. <laughs> but I have boys, they're not going to go through that. They'll be like, take it all. I'm out of here. <laughs> Thank you. Nice to meet you. Still Here Hollywood is a production of the Still Here Network. All things technical run by Justin Zangerly. Theme music by Brian Sanishin. And executive producer is Jim Lichtenstein. <laughs>